Imagine running a full-blown 3D printing business with your family starting from an Ender 3 in tiny rural Montana. James built a profitable business selling locally, and physical stores now represent 100% of his revenue. His 30-year-old son runs booths solo, and their whole family is on it. In this interview with our community member James, you will know how he went from a hobbyist to full-on entrepreneur, and how he approaches local shops, sets his prices, and even created a scavenger hunt that doubled his followers all powered by 3D printing and a lot of hustle. All right, so I have here with me James Bowen and he has a very cool STL Fix subscriber story that we would like to share. But before we get to that part, James, how did you start with 3D printing and what were you doing? How did you start? What was your first printer? Tell us a little bit about your 3D printing story. You know, my first printer was a, just a regular Ender 3. I, I think most of us probably started there. Yeah. I started off as just a hobby with me and my kid. My kid was 10 at the time. We were just trying to, he's very interested in engineering. So we were just trying to kind of explore different, different things he can do with, with that sort of knowledge and try to figure out how to make it better for him. And then over time, it just kind of turned into what we have going on now. All right, cool. And then after like, after the Ender Tree, like did you start selling your your prints right away or did you have had it as a hobby? How it all? become a thing. It was a hobby for about a year or so. Mm -hmm. And then actually SDL Flick was the first place I subscribed to. Oh yeah, that's sell. cool. And then I started doing farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. uh, started to start a local farmer market. Um, and now again, I am from a very rural, small community in the middle of Montana. At this point, you only had your Ender 3. At this point, I only have my Ender 3. Yep, correct. I've only had my current printers for like a year. Uh -huh. So I, I, I started with an Ender 3 and then and then I got a really good deal from someone for an Ender 3 Max Neo. Nice. So yeah, I mean, it's nothing compared to what we have now, but it was a, it was a solid start. It really taught me how to how, how to use this the systems and what the settings do and the different how to really dial in what we're doing yeah i think like everybody that started in this period was not afraid of like learning the slicer and try to understand each one of the settings in the slicer meant and how it interfered in your printer well i started on a printer that was like an open source project but then i the first printer that i saw i, I was impressed with the quality of was a cr10 which is a project that Creality had before the Enders. But I think everybody that started in this period, like we were from a time that 3D printing was not like ready for a consumer market. So we, we learned a lot by doing that, right? By using those initial printers. Right, right. And I think I think starting with those type of printers really helps learn and, and diagnose the problems we have now, like on the bamboo. Absolutely, because are, it's the same problem, right? Right, it's yeah. always the same stuff. <laughs> yeah, nice. So you had you had your Ender 3 and then you, you've got a good deal on an Ender 3 Max. You kept on selling on those farmers market, you kept on, on going on public events. Farmers markets, stuff like that. Um, in fact, I didn't even do a big public event until this last Christmas season. Oh yeah, and how was it? It was, I did really well. That's kind of what pushed me in a, in a growing this year, testing the markets out. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a big part of what we do is we test the markets. Awesome. That you were actually exploring other channels that the majority of the makers don't really explore. So when you were in the farmer's market, what else were you trying? What, where, where else were you trying to push your prints? I, I was talking to local business owners, mm -hmm. uh, like just anyone I could come into contact with that sold stuff in a store, right? Any brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Because my whole thought process was the, the Etsy selling online and all that is a very saturated market. Uh -huh. Very saturated. So I'm trying to find a way to sell and make, and make a profit that doesn't that isn't saturated mm -hmm. nice and, that's cool and so it's it, it was talking to everyone i i, I could what it comes down to awesome and how how's your like your current setup what do you have in terms of printers right now i have i have three p1s's and one a1 mini i have an elegu carbon uh centauri carbon on ah, the new one the new one and yeah cool to be similar to a p1s uh-huh uh-huh the results as well, like it's comparable. I don't know yet. It's it's somewhere in between here and there. Ah, he is still you're still being shipped yeah. the 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 Century yeah. Carbon. Nice. I saw that. I saw one of those in China, and they they seem really really good. So I'm I'm anxious for those as well. Yeah, me too. Especially when they come up with the AMS here. Uh, yeah, allegedly in the second semester they will have a multicolor system. Yeah, that, that's what I heard. We're excited about that. And STL Flix is celebrating three years of existence and we have a very special promo for that. Three years of unlimited access with commercial license so you can print and sell everything that we have created in the past three years. And in the next three years, 
with also the e-commerce builder that is inside the commercial subscription, or even if you want to learn with the best in the 3D printing world, we also have the SL Academy that has seven different courses from 3D printing, entrepreneurship, all the way to painting and promoting your products. So make sure to check that out. How was the path from the two enders to your current setup? What happened in, in between that? I, I went out and I did a lot of farmers markets, every single market I get in, in, in touch with. And, and mind you, while I'm doing this, I'm working full time, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't live off of just 3D printing yet. So I'm working full time, I'm grinding every day, moving to something a little bit more forward, uh -huh. right? Every single day we're, we're expanding, we're building new products, we're doing something, right? To get to that end goal. And at that time, the end goal was to get a P1S. Uh-huh, nice. I understand that a P1S, I mean, they're 800 bucks, right? It's not for worrying or all, we got a phone here now. But I mean, and it's not a ton of money, but as a small business owner, that's yeah you know, it's that, that, it's relevant money yeah right so from there after we got the p1s after we ground and we finally got to the point of having a p1s we were able to really put out some good product and the majority of it is from stl flicks nice that's cool what do you sell the most like what are your what's your like go-to type of stl for my area and so now something i tell everyone that does this is my markets are different than your markets uh-huh obviously yeah right so in my area, the animals, the animals sell them. Ah, oh, nice, nice. We're gonna have a very cool animals drop really soon. I'm not gonna anticipate Good. much. <laughs> well, maybe by the time the video is out, but I don't think it's gonna be out before this video is out, so. Okay, it's it's the type of flexi that like the ray and the recent drop. Uh -huh. That, that kind of like that chain feel on the bottom. It almost feels like fabric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff really sells. Because that's that's not a, like a, an easy print for a beginner. So you do need to like dial in which comes back to what we were talking at the beginning, right? When you know like how to dial in the settings and then understand the problems that you have, it gets easier for, for tackle to tackle these hard projects like like the, the manta ray, all of these, they're they are based on fabric, but they are they are tricky to print. Right. And so what we found works for us, again, what works for me is different than what works for you guys, but what works for us is we use a cold plate. Uh-huh. Really makes a difference on, on printing those rays. We're using the cold plate on some of our printers as well, the cryo grip, the blue one. Yep, that's what we use too, that nice. exact same one. The big Q brand. Yeah, because that's that's also something that you gotta think about when you are like being on a market like printing for profit, that's what we call. You need replicability, right? You need to be able to be confident that your farm is going to deliver the projects that you wish to print, right? Because if you have a very high failure rate, that's like money you're just losing. Exactly, exactly. And another thing you can do, or something that I do, is as long as the failure isn't terrible, I'll turn around and use it for advertising. So no, let's that's say, cool. well, like, like I'll have a ray that sometimes they break loose right at the end, mm -hmm. right? Some of those, some of those little links break loose right at the end. So then I'll use it on my Find It Friday program, which is something I do local for the kids. Mm -hmm. It still works just fine, but. I go hide it somewhere and the kids go out and find it. Ah, that's cool. Well, you, you taught me, you talked a little bit about that on, on Facebook, but you can, you can now tell us like, what do you do exactly? How is that? How does that work? So it's, I, I do it as, as advertisement and it's helped me get in other stores too. Uh huh. Uh, Cause I'm a, I'm an active community member and that matters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so every Friday I go out, I'll take like a little mini or what, whatever, right? Sometimes it's a slightly failed print. Sometimes it's a mini, you know, it's just kind of whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. And I go hide it somewhere around my town. Um, like I said, I live in little Montana. There isn't a whole heck of a lot out here, but we got a lot of woods. Uh -huh. So I'll go hide it in like a fishing access or something like that. Nice. And, and then I post a picture on our social media. The kids go out and find what uh, whatever it is I happen to hide. That's so cool. And and do people engage with that? Oh, absolutely. It, it has probably doubled my followers. Oh, wow. That's that's a very neat idea. And it's easy to replicate as well. Yeah. And uh, something I started doing recently, because I you know I feel being environmentally conscious is, a, is, is important. I encourage people to grab a handful of trash while they're out there. Ah, that's cool though. So there's like a, a little give back as well for the person that gets the product. Yeah, they go out, they get a little something, grab a handful of trash while they're out there, and then their kids get a, get a whatever. That's cool. That's cool. And it teaches a lot for the kids as well. Right. Right. So tell me a little bit about how you got into, because one of the things we do have an entrepreneurship course. I don't know if you, 
if you've heard about it. it it's in inside STL Academy. It's called From Zero to Revenue, where we teach a little bit how to build this, this 3D printing business, right? But one of the things that I incentivize a lot is for people to try and sell at physical stores because physical stores, for one, they have recurrence, right? If they sell well, they're going to buy from you again, which the end consumer might not because he's only going to buy it from you and when he needs something back, but they, the store, they will try to refill their stock from time to time, right? So you do have a little bit of recurrency and that recurrency per se can like almost almost create like the base layer of your revenue that can kind of sustain your business and then you can use the end consumer as your profit margin well simplifying a lot but that's kind of like the system that i like to to talk a little bit about so tell me how you got into the physical stores and how how much do they represent of your revenue currently um actually they represent all of my revenue oh wow i don't do i don't do anything online because that market is so saturated nice and you do the markets uh, and the physical store yep yep I, I am there. I am there almost every single sale, short of the stores. Mm -hmm. Cool. We are my son, and my son's really involved too. He's he's a little entrepreneur himself. How old is he? Because he said he was really small when you purchased your first printer. He's thirteen now. Oh wow, that's so cool that he's involved. And, and he can run the markets by himself. He's getting that good. That's cool. That's right. Then it must be a really cool father-son experience as well. We, you know, yeah, it really is something that. Uh, we enjoy doing it together. It, it's kind of become a an us thing. You know what I mean? That's cool. And then and then my wife started helping this last year too. Nice. So the whole family is involved. It's a family business. It's a family business. Nice. And and she's a really good saleswoman too. And she has contacts that I would have never thought about. <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to talk to you. Is like what? What do you see as your like next step? Like what? What are you investing on? What are you studying? What do you wish to accomplish? Like in the in the next step, not in the long run. The next step is, is more printers and move it out of the and move it out of the kitchen. I'm gonna get like one of those prefab sheds or something like that. Uh huh. And then move it all out there. Nice. And how how are you like in that milestone? Are you close to that? I don't know. A year and a half, two years away from that, I think. We're growing slow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, to be totally honest, but that's also because I'm trying to build a solid infrastructure. Yeah, and you're you're juggling things, right? You're still like on your on your full time job, and this is a part time thing. I I was in your position as well, and it was it, it that that transition is probably the hardest moment of all. It is hard. Because trying to figure out the right time to do it. When can and you know because I got a family, right? Yeah, no. It's... When, when can I? My, family off my thought process in that, like I, I had a financial goal that I was very strict with it. When I reached that amount of revenue, then I'll be able to have this as a fixed cost. Bruno is going to be a, a an employee of this business and I'll have to pay myself that much every single month. And then when I reach that financial goal, I, I compromise with the decision and quit my full time job. But it's it's a it's a tricky process. Absolutely. But there's one thing right. that like I only realized, and it's obvious, but I only realized when I left my full-time job is that all of a sudden you have a lot more time to think on that thing that you're working on. Because right now, like your, like your mental bandwidth, you still have to manage things and it compromises a little bit, like how much you can actually think and try to figure out the, the stuff that you're doing and how to sell more, how to grow and all of that after you, after you switch. So that that becomes a, your full time thing. You have more time to structure right. everything. And one of my goals is once we get to that point is to learn how to design. I ah, nice. I have a couple. I have a couple designs out there, but nothing like what you guys do. Cool, cool. But that's when I get to that point. I, I want to be able to take the time to learn how to design. Yeah, no, you should because then you have exclusive products. Then that saturated right. market is no longer saturated, right? Right. I mean, I got a couple things that I make that, that are my design, but nothing crazy. Nah, that's how it starts. Like you gotta start uh, at the easy thing and then move on to the hardest one. And and that's where I rely on on people like you guys to to, to have the time to design these, things. so then I'm able to just uh, push play and go. Yeah, and that's cool. Product. And that's where I rely on quality models like from STL Six. I'm glad. I'm glad that you like our work. We do. We do have quite a work to to push all the STLs that we do. It's a it's a big process and we, there's a lot of people involved to get into the results. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, even my little operation gets to be a little, a little much sometimes, let alone your guys' stuff. I mean, in your background there, I see what, five or six printers minimum? No, but this is, this is just the studio. <laughs> this oh. is not our farm. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no, our farm has like more than 40 printers currently. That's a lot to keep running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And we have the, because we have the printers on the farm and then they, we have the design department, they have their own farm as well, which has like six printers. Because like our process, we first we do the base mesh, which is the mesh that we do the functionality. And then it goes on to the artists that they make like the sculptural mesh. So the sculptural mesh is the final product and the base mesh is the beginning of this process, right? So the design team, they test that base mesh and then it goes to the sculptural team and they make the final product and then it goes to the official farm, which is the one that has 40 printers. Yeah, that, that's so much work. So if you think about the big categories of models, like what what is your your preferred one? Is it the mini articulated? Is it where we're putting the pushing? Flexi. The nice. Flexis. The flexis sell more for me than anything else. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's why we launched so many flexes as well. Your guys and then Cinderwing are my top sellers. Nice, cool, cool. Yeah, she has. She makes an amazing job. Yeah, I mean, I made a dragon the other day in the local, um, the local high school colors that got snapped up real quick because you know that sort of stuff is thinking what sells here. Yeah, also absolutely. It was very nice to meet you, James. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us, uh, share a little bit of your story, uh, and I'm very happy that you are a happy STL fixer as well. Yeah, you guys were my first people I subscribed to, and I have no. Uh, We'll keep on improving our job as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so before we go, James, please make a shout out to your business. Uh, tell us the name, how we can find it online, the handles, everything so we can find you. Okay, so I'm JB3D Design. Right now, all we, we do everything through Facebook. So find me there on Facebook. My logo looks like that right there. JB3D. JB3D. Awesome. That's me. Okay, cool. So I hope that brings a lot more business to you as well. I hope so. <laughs> awesome. If you're thinking about turning your prints into profit, this story is pure gold. So smash that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on the bell so you never miss a new episode. Let's grow this journey together.